the Oklahoma City Thunder snapped their skid, beating the Toronto Raptors as every young player on this roster shines, from Josh Giddy to Eugene Umaruri. This was a very fun game for the Thunder. What does it all mean, big picture? We'll talk about that coming up on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder Podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, media member, and editor-in-chief over at thunderousintentions.com. Rylan Styles. you can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Stiles. Follow the show on Twitter at LOTHUNDERPOD. Email the show, LOTHUNDERPOD at gmail.com. On today's show, brought to you by LinkedIn, we're going to be diving into the Oklahoma City Thunder snapping their losing streak and beating the Toronto Raptors 132-113. to Eugene Omarui steps up in a big way. SGA plays a balanced game. Josh Giddy and Aaron Wiggins both were key cogs in this one. Plus, Pokashevsky continues to impress. A lot to dive into. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We hear for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all podcasting platforms, including on YouTube, so you never miss an episode. We'll be right back after the game against the New York Knicks in Madison Square Garden, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube for that one as well. Now, let's talk about it. As we always do, let's start with our game overview. Chet Holmgren out for the season, and then Jalen Williams, uh, Lindy Waters, Usman Chang, and Darius Baisley all were out. Mike Muscala, DNP CD, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, DNP CD as well. Uh, For Lindy and Jay Whale and Usman Chang, they played in back-to-back G League games, so it would be too much to ask them to play for three straight games. Uh, Baisley suffered that ankle sprain against the Bucks, And then... Just was not the matchup for Muscala or Robinson Earl. Could have been planned off days for those two guys also uh, w- with the Thunder kind of rotating around and mixing around their rotations. But the Thunder have another new starting lineup. This time it is uh, SGA, Lou Dort, Josh Giddy, Aaron Wiggins, and Alexei Pokashevsky. The top five minute getters, though, change also. Jalen Williams leads the way with Aaron Wiggins, SGA, Eugene O'Murray, and Trey Mann rounding out the top five minute getters. Let's start this podcast off by talking about Lou Dort. We're going to get to SGA, always will, and he typically will lead this podcast off, but I do want to give credit to Lou Dort. Lou Dort has had a awful start to the to a season. There's no sugarcoating that, and he would tell you he's had an awful start to a season, right? Everyone knows that. But I said on Friday morning's podcast, if you lop off the first 10 games and just start fresh, don't even factor him in, and just start at the Raptors game, what will a season look like? Well, so far at that Raptors game, what does he do? Three for four from three, four for seven from the floor, seven rebounds, two assists, 13 points, uh, 22 minutes. Now, I'm not going to say that he is back or he won't have another bad game again this season, and I don't know what he's going to do on Sunday morning against New York, but he looked the part in this one. He looked like Lou Dort, played really good defense. He splashed a corner transition three. He had a beautiful uh, drive and kick three whenever Wiggins... I had a drive and kick to him, and he hit the three. Lou Dort did. And then Wiggins also set him up on a cross-court pass where he was ready for it. Lou Dort caught that cross-court uh, pass. Pump fakes, get a fly, gets a flyby, steps, uh, sidestep three, reloads, splashes it in, and also had an and one driving layup. So Lou Dort did a lot of things well in this one, and I think that he deserves a ton of credit for that. Now, obviously, the big question is, can he build upon this? Can he turn one good game into two? And so on and so forth and kind of get further and further removed from that brutal cold streak. So we'll see if he can do that. We'll see if the Thunder are able to build upon this fun game against Toronto. Uh, This game had a lot of fun moments. And again, it felt like every single young player was thriving for the Thunder in this contest, including Alexei Pukashevsky. He scores 14 points and five rebounds with four blocks. Poku had four blocks in this one. One for two from three, including an and one on a three-pointer, so a four-point play, and he went uh, for 60% from the floor. He had an alley-oop dunk from Josh Skiddy, 
He did a really good job of using his body in this one to shield off defenders, notably Scotty Barnes on one uh, layup attempt. Uh, had a really good rim running uh, moment with SGA where SGA hits him with a pocket pass. Had a put back dunk even in 22 minutes. And SGA, and SGA helped him, you know, set him up, of course, on that pick and roll opportunity. But overall, Pokashevsky just looked the part once again. It doesn't look spectacular. It's not like superstardom or anything like that, but it is rotational. You know, it is rotational prospect for him. Like he, he can be someone who's involved in this rotation moving forward, big picture wise. And that's what it's all about. It's about finding what his role can be. And to be honest with you, when you watched him prior to this year, his future was uncertain or way more uncertain than it is right now. It, it seems pretty clear that through these first 12 games, small sample size, that if he can play like this, there is a role for him moving forward with this team, with his organization and in the NBA as a whole. Because there are going to be matchups where you're going to want to have this seven-footer who can connect your offense together, who can roll to the rim better, who can roll up at the rim as well. He's done that a lot better defensively as well. Still a lot to learn on that aspect of it and been playing drop coverage. But with his improvement that we've seen from him playing drop coverage, you can envision that he can still get better at that at just 20 years old. So everything we've seen from Poku this year has been a sign in the right direction. So it's been great to see kind of how he has progressed. It was great to see Lou Dort snap his cold streak, and those two guys were pivotal in this win, as were Aaron Wiggins and Eugene Morui um, for the Thunder in this one. We're going to talk about them, J-Dub, SGA, Josh Giddy, and how the Thunder won this game all coming up on the Lockdown Thunder podcast. I do want to tell you, though, that this podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn. Folks, LinkedIn is incredible. They have you covered this entire hiring process for your for your small business with LinkedIn by going to LinkedIn Jobs, using the hashtag Purple Frame. We're hiring on your job posts and let them know that you're hiring. And so, what you do right now is go to LinkedIn.com/slash LockedOnMBA. You post your job for free, and what LinkedIn Jobs does for you is they give you the best qualified candidates for your small business and they give you resources like screening questions, like skill tests that can give you the most qualified applicants in a hurry. That way you can fill these positions up and help your small business grow and flourish and do better. So go over there right now to linkedin.com slash MBA to post your job for free. It will help you find the qualified candidates better and faster than leading competitors. Check it out today, linkedin.com slash MBA. Post your job for free and get started on your hiring process. We are back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LOThunderPod. Email the show, LOThunderPod at gmail.com. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. For your second listen, Check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. It is a daily podcast that gives you all of your sport news nationally for every sport in under 30 minutes or less. It is out there for you right now, beyond the box score and behind the scenes. So check it out today, Lockdown Sports Today, hosted by Peter Bukowski. They got you covered for all of the latest breaking news around sports. We're going to continue talking about this game against the Toronto Raptors. That was a very, very fun one to watch. The Thunder also debuted their City Edition jerseys, which you can check out on the thumbnail of this episode, uh, even. I thought that they looked good on court. I thought that they looked a lot better on court than they did in a picture. I thought the same way about last year's jerseys as well. They looked a lot better you know, watching them, uh, playing them, than just watching a picture of them. Uh, Aaron Wiggins. If it's, if it's the jerseys, if it's the minutes, whatever it is, get him more of it because he played really well. He made some amazing passes. The behind-the-back pass to Dort on the drive and kick, the cross-court pass to Dort. He had a behind-the-head pass to Pokashevsky. Like, I think that Aaron Wiggins embodies and and is a model of the messaging that Mark has talked about in the in this entire season. So you go back, you listen to what Mark Dagnuts told you, Dagnuts told you this entire season. We're changing up our lineups it is not, uh, you know, very uh, traditional. It's unconventional. But the, the 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 bottom line is these guys have to stay ready. They have to be prepared to play at any game, at any time, in any circumstance. 
And so Wiggins has not gotten a ton of minutes. And this is a guy that I was very high on last year. And so early on, his minutes have been up and down and mostly down uh, for, you know, this so far this season. But this is exactly what the Thunder are preparing these guys for. He's not played a ton of minutes, but he was ready to go. He plays uh, a bulk minutes in this game and scores 17 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, a steal, and a block with those incredible passes. He has the, the spin move dribble uh, th- that keeps him alive off the bounce and has a cutting and finds a cutting Jada for one of those assists as well. And uh, had a dump off to Eugenio Marui in the dunker spot with that uh, move through the lane. And then also had a give and go with J Dub. So like Aaron Wiggins shows you that he can be a facilitator. He shows you that he can score at all three levels and he's played really good defense his entire time in the NBA. I think that the offensive expansion from him this year uh, has been noticeable since summer league, like in, going back to summer league, you started to see more of him scoring in the mid range and more at the rim. Uh, last year was more three and D. Now you're seeing him play make more off of that uh, and, and set up his teammates better as a playmaker and as a dribbler and as a passer. With that defense still hanging around an above average level, like I, I really like what we've seen from Wiggins, I, and I think that his future in the NBA um, is an interesting one. Now, when you're projecting his future, I think that a very, a very high priority bench piece, like like a seventh, eighth man that comes in and gives you a spark is kind of where you're at right now with, with Wiggins. And, the, and for being the 55th overall pick, that is a that is a great job by him to hit that ceiling if he can get there and, and maintain this uh, level of play and get these opportunities more often. I think that he can provide you... The, the, the good thing about him is that he can manufacture a spark on either end. So like if you have a game in which your defense is just... It's not there. It's not there that night. They didn't show up or you just can't find an answer for somebody, you can stick Wiggins on them and Wiggins can uh, deter them. If you have a night where your offense can't get going, we've seen Wiggins score as a cutter. We've seen him score in the mid-range. We've seen him score as a three-pointer, as a three-point shot guy in the corner. We've seen him now, now in this game, play make. And so he can pr- uh, provide a spark there as well. Wiggins has done a great job so far in his career in stepping up and filling holes whenever your team needs, them, needs him to. And so that's kind of how you stick around the NBA. That's how you kind of carve out a niche to stick around long-term in the league. Another guy whose future that is, is hard to project right now, I want to see more of, is Eugenio Murray. Eugenio Murray had some flashes in the summer league last year for Dallas, uh, played well for the Thunder, of course, uh, and, and earned a, a two-way spot for the Thunder this offseason in, in the preseason process, uh, went out on Wednesday and dropped 27 points in the, on, in the G League against the Santa Cruz Warriors. Mark says he will not play Thursday in the G League because they want him to play on Friday. So I wonder if that was something that they planned in the preseason. Like, like, was that something that was planned way back in October? Like, okay, when we're laying out the schedule, let him play in the Wednesday doubleheader. Don't let him play on Thursday night and have him play Friday against the Raptors. Or, just as the season progressed, did he see something in game planning for the Raptors that he wanted to specifically to use Eugene for? I wonder if, which one it was You know, in, in that aspect for, for Mark. But Eugene gets to play against his hometown team and just thrives. He went five for six from three. It was his only miss of the night. Uh, he, has, he was the player of the game. Uh, and, and afterward, SGA splashes him with water and says they got to cool him off uh, after the game. Like, he was, that, he was that good. He was that special. And so uh, I, I think that that was an awesome moment for SGA, a fellow Canadian, a fellow teammate, of course. Uh, and they had that fun moment in the Bali Sports interview um, afterward. Had three rebounds, a steal, and an assist. And it, Eugenio Marie can... can score a variety of ways as well. Now, I don't think that that three-point shot is is like five for six every night. And I don't know what it's going to level off at. I I think that you'd be, you'd be I think, happy if he can become a league average shooter, uh, much less a five for six guy every night. But the way that he uses his body in the NBA is interesting. And the way that he uses it in the G League is just jaw-dropping. Like in the G League, he's basically a center. Uh, at least in the early goings, because they've only played three games and they played the same opponent uh, you know, four, you know, three times. They, they've played the the Ignite in Las Vegas. They've played the uh, Santa Cruz Warriors twice, and then they'll play the Ignite again twice this this upcoming week. So, like they have not played a variety of opponents, but in the G League so far, whenever uh, Eugene's played, he's been able to just bully people with his body, which we expect whenever he plays in in stuff like summer league, preseason, and uh, G League. But overall, there are a lot of people in Dallas who liked him before he got hurt. And there are a lot of people whenever he was in Oregon that liked him. Um, so I don't want to write him off as like somebody who can't who can't be the next in line to continue the tradition of the Thunder 
finding diamonds in the rough on the two-way contract. But I do want to see more out of him, of course, before we start to anoint him as that. But I will say, I'm incredibly happy for him. Like, like as just a personal story of a guy who got his shot last year but got hurt immediately, right? He only played in a couple of, you know, a couple of games in the G League. I think it was a seven. And then played in like two NBA games and then got hurt. Uh, you know, this guy got hurt last year almost immediately, then had an uncertain NBA future heading into the offseason because the Mavericks didn't bring him back, and then gets hooked on with the Thunder, and now he's thriving whenever he played for the G League team, and he's gotten the chance with the NBA team. I mean, he played a great preseason. He dominated those two uh, overseas games that they played in the Paycom Center, and then he also dominated, like, uh, to the small extent whenever he's gotten, like, 14 points in a game before in this year, you know, this season, and now he bursts onto the scene against his hometown team. That just has to feel good for him personally. This is a hot stretch, but let's see how it evolves and how it grows. My two biggest areas for him is, one, I want to see what he looks like positionally. Like, like what position do you play Eugene Murray at long-term in the NBA? And number two, the shot. Like, what does that three-point shot look like? Five for six is great, and you don't want to take anything away from him, but when everything settles down and kind of comes back to, to the mean, what is that average for him in a, in a larger sample size? But this is great. And, and he deserved the night like this as a guy who does everything right. And, and like truly does work hard and truly does um, put in the hours and, and, and doesn't complain about going to the G league or whatever, like embraces it. Like I love going to those blue games and seeing the players that will buy in and, and treat it as though it's a real live NBA game and an opportunity because it is, it's a real opportunity for them to get better and for them to um, improve their careers. And those who take it seriously, I really root for. And he was one of them on Wednesday that really locked in during the game and dominated. So coming up, let's talk J dub. Let's talk SGA. Let's talk Josh Kitty on today's lockdown thunder podcast on the lockdown podcast network, your teams every day. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LL Thunderpod. Email the show, LLThunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, we are diving into this game against the Toronto Raptors, and we're talking J-Dub now. J-Dub has 10 points. On, on 50% shooting, he went 0 for 5 from 3, but yet he went 5 for 5 inside the arc. So that just shows kind of how efficient of a score he can be because even whenever his shots aren't falling beyond the arc, he can impact the game inside the arc. Uh, 10 points, 11 assists in this game. A steal, 3 rebounds. He has great touch on his pass and has amazing vision. And, and I think what is so encouraging for the future of j this guy was picked with a 12th overall pick. Like I, I feel like we don't give J Dub the ceiling that we should, because he was the third first round pick and technically your latest first round pick. But this was still a guy picked in the tw- in the 12th slot. Like when you're picking in the 12th slot, you're hoping that his ceiling can be that of an all star or that of a, a of a really really good starter. And J Dub has that potential. Like it's time to realize it. I know he played in Santa Clara for two three years, but he still has high potential because of the way he impacts games and can find ways to impact them. If you need a, a score, he can score a little bit. He can, he can of course make the right cuts and, and be the beneficiary of some great playmaking. If you need him to defend, he can defend his butt off each and every night plays really solid defense. And then if you need him to play, to play make, he had that 14 assist game uh, in the preseason. He has an 11 assist game in the regular season just now with against Toronto, a long lengthy Toronto team. And he just finds a way to be a positive asset for you as a rookie. Most rookies are not that. Most rookies are not a positive asset for you. But J-Dub has been so far in his career and will continue to be as long as you give him opportunity. And the Thunder are doing that. They're giving him opportunities with each passing game. I really, really think that J-Dub has also potential. Of course, not this year, but like in the future of his NBA career as he continues to grow and evolve, like he will be that type of player uh, as, because of all the different things he can do and all the different avenues in which he can impact a game. like he, he won't be a top 15 player in the league, but he will be a player who everyone respects and everybody thinks is a high-quality player that eventually cracks an all-star team, I think, uh, at some point in his career. Wow. 
to show you how good of a game this was, SGA is just now being talked about for the first time. 20 points, 4 assists, 3 rebounds, 3 steals for SGA, 57% from the floor, and 1 for 2 from 3. He's a top 10 scorer in this league. Uh, he only He's uh, of those guys in the top 10. He's second in field goal percentage behind only Giannis, who's only like 2% better than him, I believe, uh, in that category. And, of course, for Giannis, it's easy to, uh, to to have a better field goal percentage whenever you can just dunk on seemingly every possession. But, of course, Giannis also uh, takes some jump shots as well. But, nonetheless, SGA playing fantastic right now and, and, and is playing a balanced game in this one and was not pressing. Like, look, SGA had every right against the Raptors, you know, against his hometown team. Again, that obviously matters to him um, to say, yeah, you know what? 20 points is enough. I'm going to try to get for 25 or 30, like in the midst of this game and start forcing things. He had every right to, but he didn't. It was not, you know, it was not necessarily um, his night. Now, granted, 20 points is still a great night, that, but that's kind of the standard we've seen so far from him this year that, you know, 20 points is kind of like, whoa, what happened here? Not, not 30, not 28, 20 points. No, but still, he, he could have, and, and it been explainable and it had been not crucified for him to um, try to take over and try to shoot more, but he didn't. He, he laid back, played a balanced game, and let his teammates handle it as they were playing well. You know, Wiggins was playing well, Dort was playing well, Eugene Maru was playing well. And so I think that that maturity and that kind of leadership from him is why he can be a number one option and will be a number one option for this Thunder team. And, and it kind of just shows um, his ability to... to play as the alpha in a controlled way. And that is where you can really start to build a scary team around somebody like that. Somebody who has that killer mentality that can score 40 points in a game that can hit the step back three with 0.6 seconds left, but can also defer and trust their teammates to make the right decisions and make the right basketball play. That is where you can start to build a really complimentary team that can win championships. And so those qualities should be pointed out along the way as you start to build and grow. Josh Giddy uh, played an interesting game. He had 15 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, shot, 66, 60, shot 66% from the floor, and 1 for 1 from 3. But he did have 7 turnovers. Now, I think you can excuse 2 of those turnovers, so now you're down to 5 turnovers. I, I think that the, that the 1 turnover in the pocket pass to Poku, where it just didn't feel like Poku was ready for, and it kind of just got botched, uh, that was listed as a Josh Giddy turnover. I personally would have called that more of a turnover on Poku, but... You know, it is a Josh Giddy turnover on the stat sheet. And then he had one in the pick and roll where you know he kind of just got blitzed a little bit and, and got ripped. Okay, that's kind of excusable. But then he just had five bad passes where a couple of them he tried to do a little bit too much. A couple of them he just threw it right to the defense. Um, and you end up with seven turnovers, which looked a lot. It looked a lot worse than it felt. What I mean by that is, you know, when I'm watching this game, it didn't hit me at the time, like in the moment, in, in, in watching the game, that he had seven turnovers. Until I went back and saw the box, I was like, whoa, he had seven turnovers? Like, it, it did not feel that way in real time. Like, it, like, it did not feel painstaking watching him turn the ball over, so to say, in, in, in this game. But obviously, that's a number that you want to see head in the opposite direction moving forward. But the Thunder once led this game by 32 points. There was two lead changes four times this game was tied. The Thunder won the rebounding battle, but uncharacteristically, they lost the turnover battle by three. The Thunder shot 41% from three. They shot 56% from the floor and 76% from the line. The Thunder won points in the paint 70 to 48. They lost second chance points 26 to 11. And they won fast break points 17 to 8. The bet of the day was OKC plus five and a half. That obviously cashed in as they won on the money line. The MVP of the game was Eugene O'Marui. Up next, the Thunder play in Madison Square Garden on Sunday at 11 a.m. OKC sits at 57, uh, I should say, at five, at 5 and 7, and they're a half game out of a playing spot. Big picture in this game, it was a fun game. Like, if you missed this game, go back and watch it, even though you just know what happens. Go back and watch it because it felt like every young player stepped up in a big way against Toronto today. Uh, the last time that this that this team, though, played in MSG, uh, Madison Square Garden, which they'll play out on Sunday, uh, the last time they played there, Josh Giddy dropped 28 points, 11 rebounds, and 12 assists. Trey Mann dropped 30 points, and Darius Baisley at 23 and 8. Now, Baisley is out again with that ankle injury for the game against uh, the Knicks, and SGA returns to MSG for the first time uh, in two years, I believe. So he didn't play last year, but he played the year after that, uh, the year before that in MSG. So that'll be fun. It's always fun to watch anyone play in MSG because there's just something about it that makes players play better and also very young teams play better in MSG, I feel like. So they just kind of feel that atmosphere. And 11 a.m., which is noon, of course, on the East Coast. 
You might sneak up and beat them at noon. Who knows? Uh, so it should be a fun game to enjoy. Uh, you get, get another screen out there to watch football and the Thunder, but I think that this will be a fun one to watch. R.J. Barrett out there uh, playing as well with, against SGA, that kind of Canadian synergy, <laughs> so to say. And then can Lou Dort continue his um, his hot streak, I guess? I think it's not a hot streak yet. It's only one game, but can he build upon his, uh, his first really good game of the season? Uh, so that'll be fun. We'll recap it all in this podcast afterward. We'll have a mail, mailback episode and also talk an NBA draft this week, plus recap every game. And we're going to recap those two games of Scoot Henderson playing in the Paycom Center this week. So all that is coming up for you to listen to on this show. Subscribe for free across all podcasting platforms, including on YouTube, so you never miss an episode. And until tomorrow, be good and be good to one another.